Yo, new scene? Who this? Yeah. I can't wait to see it. Oh, that looks clean. Right? Looks fucking great. I like it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Dungeon Discourse. The... I still need a tagline. I've been saying the show about the show, but I'm pretty sure that's what they say on, that's what they say on fucking... The it critical is. role version of this. It so is. Yeah. It is what it's like. But it's so, it's it sounds so stolen. catchy because it is the show about it's the so show. Catchy. This is the weekly talk show where we talk about the show that we do that is Dungeon Select. So it makes sense, you know? But, you know, for all these fucking d, &D elitists out there, they're like... You, know. you can't do me. But hey, anyway. Uh, hey, everybody. Today on Dungeon Discourse, we have uh, Laura and Belle. It's It's... Got a little girl's night today, guys. We're gonna, paint our, we're, gonna, we're gonna paint each other's nails. We're gonna have a pillow Aww. fight. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great fun. You um, joke, but I seriously debated because I have no other time today painting my nails while we did this. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, you should absolutely do that. We're gonna be talking about their character creation, their session zero, and we're also gonna quickly recap session two, uh, of course, and, and talk about that a little bit. Answer any questions that people in chat may have. We have a couple of questions. Uh, submit it to the Reddit as well, so we're gonna we're gonna look at those as well. Um. Okay. First of all, thanks so much for being here, everybody. You guys are awesome. Uh, any announcements? Oh, of course, check out all of our socials: Twitter, uh, Reddit. Check out the YouTube and all that stuff. Um. And, of course. Every Monday, we do Baldur's Gate. Every Thursday, we do this. Every Sunday, we do Dungeon Select. So, plenty of D&D to go around. Uh, I don't really have any announcements other than the usual shenanigans. So, if you guys have anything... Nope. Um, just a reminder, I said it last session, but in case anyone missed it, the one shot that I am running and Belle is playing in has moved to September 4th. So, if you want to watch a one shot set in the Feywild with an emphasis on LGBT characters, players, and shenanigans, then mark your calendar. I play oh, yeah. a real gay pirate. That's nice. Yeah. nice. Hell yeah. All right. I so I guess to. we'll just uh, we'll we'll just fucking we'll just jump into it. I want to start with uh, your character creation, if y'all don't mind. Yeah. And we're gonna start with Laura. Um, <clears throat> just walk us through your process. What? How did you decide on your character, and and all that good stuff? Just just go through the entire process of of your character mm -hmm. from from picking the race and class to picking your you making your backstory, all that stuff. Just uh, yeah, just just give us the rundown, really. Yeah. Also, realize not only is this just like girls episode, but also you picked the episode with the two players who give you the longest backstories ever at the I same did. time. I, I sure did. I sure did. <laughs> Take a while. <laughs> um. Uh, it lit as as per usual, all my characters start from one very simple, very single sentence idea. And this one was, I don't know what voice to do. And I'm very insecure about voice acting. So all, a lot of the players in our group are, they, they, they kind of undermine how good they all are at it. Almost everyone <laughs> is a better voice actor than me. And I'm very insecure about it. And I was like, well, if your character doesn't talk, you don't need a voice so um then i was like i want to do a character who is mute and then there's the added benefit of um also it kind of brings an element of like playing a disabled D, &D character in some way because like D, D characters are pretty intense they're all usually very physically able because you're fighting monsters you're doing like crazy things right but it's like hey people don't have to be like perfectly healthy or like typical uh beings to do those things either it's fantasy we can do what we want um so it started there and then the Plus, idea for uh, this is how by the way how i did with them as well and this is how it's gonna be for every discourse i'm just gonna fucking like interject every once in a while That's when fine. i when Go i hear it. stuff that you guys say <laughs> Plus, point in case a lot of people yeah, exactly so like a lot of people whenever they make their characters uh tend to forget like because there's a, especially like backstory right like every not a single uh, this is definitely more about the mental aspect like their mental well-being not a single D, D character ever made is mentally all there because <laughs> a, no one in their right fucking mind put their life <laughs> on do, the line all the time do the things the average D, &D character gets up to so yeah, there's, exactly. there's always that that like aspect of they're far from perfect because if they were 
they wouldn't be going to this cave it. and yeah, fight would this dragon that's in there and try to They'd see be the tucked you know away I mean? in a little farmstead somewhere. Right, so... you know, right? Just living the life. <laughs> the sharpest weapon they own is a hoe, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like... yeah exactly, exactly. And the, the class choice just came from the... We had an off-stream campaign that Dutch used to run and I played in, but Dutch was like, I'm putting in so much work for Dungeon Select, I can't do this twice, so... The dungeon select took priority fairly, and I missed playing a monk because that was the class I played in that campaign. Also, not that it's looking this is happening, the monk I played in that campaign was like the clumsiest, most useless fucking monk you've ever seen. I rolled like garbage all the time. Ask like Soko in the chat. No, yeah, Tana, Tana was the most terrible. useless monk you've ever met. So I was like, I want to play a monk <laughs> that doesn't suck. Um, not that I'm doing very well so far with my rolls, but I'm trying. So then I was like, how do I kind of and then the one part that was a little bit meta-y and less storytelling was like the whole pairing of, of the tabaxi race with monk with like their agility and their naturally like their 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 racial abilities just lean heavily into monk shit anyway. Yeah, like, so, like at least it lean into the more like dexy acrobatics. Yeah. So like I I, th I think for rogue it would have worked out pretty well as well in that yeah. in that sense. Yeah. Um, so I was monk, just like I want to be a monk yeah. that doesn't suck so much and. And then I was like, okay, now I need to come up with why my character doesn't talk, rather than just Laura is too scared to voice act. Um, <laughs> and I had saved a bunch from ages ago from like a one shot. I used the website, who the fuck is my D&D &D character? Cause it was a one shot. So that's, I don't put in the crazy amount of like novel writing for story backstory that I do <laughs> for a long campaign. And one of the things I'd saved was a character that had an attempted hanging. And I was like, well, that would, and I also have been watching Outlander recently, and there's a character who had damage to their vocal cords from an attempted hanging. And I, I, I do, I, love I think I know show. exactly what you're talking about. Cause isn't that that show where um, someone Set from like Scotland, current time woman gets sent back, back in time? Yeah. I think my mom yeah, watched that. Yeah, she's from like the 90s, I I, I, 40s. Funnily enough, I watched that because I was watching with her. Yeah, I was just you watched upstairs, the episode? And I think hanging. I watched that episode where he like, where this dude... Was like, it a, got, was it in black hung. and white a lot and silent movies a lot? Uh, maybe, but like he got hung. Okay. And then I... there there was this whole thing like he oh, he also went like like hunting with some dude that like got yeah. fucking taken by some like I don't know some tribe or whatever, and then he came back yeah. or whatever the fuck and like that that is that I think that's the character you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So then I was like, okay, now we figured out why my character doesn't talk, and. Also, I personally think every D and D character. I know this is true for me, but I think this is true for every D and D player. There's a quote from Irene Adler in *Scandal of Belgravia* season two, episode one of the BBC Sherlock, where she says, "The problem with every disguise is they're always a self-portrait." <clears throat> and so many people make characters that are like it's so different from me, but there's always some part of every character you play that is you. And me, I've been insecure about my voice just in general outside of voice acting since I was a kid. I personally have scratched vocal cords, so I have a much more milder version of what is happened to Daigon. Uh, that's why my voice is raspy all the time. I sound like I have a cold all the time. So I also was like, that's something I can easily play, that in insecurity and the whole voice situation. And then Dutch was also cool enough to be like, we can modify, because they're... A lot of D D has like some basic like hand talk element to Thieves Cant, and he's like, "We'll just like extend it so it's basically yeah. our version of sign language," and allowed me to do that. And he mentioned I also want characters to have at least a connection to one other person before forming the party, rather than a group of total strangers. So that would be a very easy way for me to latch on to someone because I need someone to help me communicate to others who don't speak Thieves Cant sign language. So it also it all just kind of naturally came together that way. And then the story, also the reason she's a hairless tabaxi is cause, and I needed, first of all, I needed a reason for her to be, people to be prejudiced against her where she grew up and for them to wrongfully accuse her of a crime and therefore hang her for said crime. And I was like, what's the reason people get wrongfully accused of crime? Prejudice. Uh, what's a way to make prejudice against a tabaxi? <laughs> I'll make her like an ugly Chicken. ass hairless cat. Um, and also it fits in because Daigon's big fear and insecurity and like, is there something wrong with me? Is it okay for me to look like this? Also like my own personal like body image, fitness, weight loss journey. It's like, I have good days and I have bad days or I feel very insecure about my body and that. how I look and stuff. So <laughs> also that. that's something I could easily play. Um, <clears throat> but what's different 
about Dai, because I, I always try and make at least a few things that are polar opposite of me, like Kisera, and it was the whole maternal thing, because Laura hates kids. Trim, it was the, the shyness, because Laura's an extrovert, Laura likes to talk to people. So for Daigon, it's just kind of her her moral attitude and like the taking a step back and the way she sol the way she problem solves is very different from the way I problem solve because she has very different priorities from me. So her we share a lot of insecurities, but then the way we deal with life is very different, basically. Okay, 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 okay. Um, let me quickly check the subreddits because oh my god, <laughs> how long before we glue hair on Daigon as a disguise? Um, <laughs> we have a question for, for you, uh, Laura. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we kind of went through Pickle Dick's question already. He asked, what went through your mind when creating your character? Do you have any specific inspiration? Uh, we just discussed that with Outlander. The only and, other and... inspiration that was a specific reference to something, the, the, where the, where in her backstory she got her monk training and like the mentor and the character she met in that instance is a Final Fantasy IX reference. Uh, for me, it's not like an obvious one in my head. It's a, a reference because I kind of made him. I stole the name. The name's an obvious reference, but uh, I kind of wanted it to be very th their relationship to be similar to the relationship between Vivi from Final Fantasy IX and his mentor, who like took him in the like frog creature dude. Um, so there, that there, there was some inspiration for that there, and the the name Dagon is a Buffy reference. Because it's from season five, my favorite episode of Buffy, the Dagon Sphere, which was used to repel the god Glorificus. And I just like the word and the way it sounds. And I had Buffy on the brain at the time. So. <laughs> there you go. And then there's a Throne of Glass <laughs> reference in mine and Belle's joint shenanigans. Yes, yes the there story. is. But you all don't know that yet, so. You don't know what it is. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, we have also we also have a question for both. I'll ask you first, Laura, since we just went over your, your character creation from... from uh, our very own artist, formerly known as Gypsy, now known as Bean. <laughs> um, how did your character creation for this campaign differ from campaign one? Did you approach it similarly or differently? It pretty much wasn't different at all, because uh, all my character creation is start with one singular point and then just kind of build on it and like fan out. Like It's like I start with one little Lego block and then just kind of build things onto it. Mm -hmm. Um... <clears throat> I, I honestly am very boring. I I because I I just do it the same every time. I don't think I did anything differently in terms of the process of it, uh, other than just I I consulted Dutch a lot more in terms of the geographics of this story. Because the last one, because I was doing the Nana Remo event for Kisaren's backstory, and I just kind of fleshed out Kalzir a lot, and I gave Dutch a lot to work with. And then I was like, I already wrote this for my novel. You don't have to use it, but you can. Man, so I, was like, I Fuck kind it, of pre-made yeah, fucking I, world building. Let's go. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I I did a lot of the geographical <laughs> world building for my, that character. And this one, I did the opposite. I was like, Dutch, I need help. I don't know where mm -hmm. physically she would have lived. I don't know where to place her in your world. So that's probably the most thing that was most different was I asked Dutch for help in terms of some of the more physical aspects of her backstory. All right. Um, OSG asks, uh, when did you decide to go for a mute character? We've, we've been over that. Um, how is it playing the character so far? Uh, so far, it's really fun. Like, I love the fact that Belle and I can just have conversations and without anyone knowing. And we, ha we had one. And then Soko's character got real mad and was like, just use your mouth. And I was like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> and it was pretty funny. Um, uh, I, well. I'm, kind of up. I also like it because I I know I personally because I get very excited and I get very I'm a very quick like decisive person so I almost immediately know exactly what my character would do in most situations so I very easily can talk over people at times or kind of like be the one taking the lead a lot so this forces me to take a, a backseat a lot more than I my instincts probably would want to but that's good because I want to allow other people to have fun and role play as well the one downside I did not think about until the dark vision then came up because i was like i have great dark vision i was like oh fuck i can't communicate in the dark because no one can see my hands True. so if but we're luckily, ever in like a real dark Koiba, combat that's setting i'm fucked in. that's where koiba <laughs> comes in oh you guys want dark vision here's 300 feet but bye good luck yeah. <laughs> but like even more so like but even if it's like again the thing people overlook all the time dark vision is you can see in dim light as if it was bright but if we ever go somewhere where it's like pitch ass black or magical darkness is but and too fucking bad. I'm, yeah, I'm just screwed. Good luck, yeah. 
The other thing I still need to work on, it won't come up for a while, because my original concept was she physically cannot talk. She, her vocal cords are damaged beyond repair. Oh no, but I think she, my original idea was she can talk, but it causes severe pain this far out from her injury. Before she couldn't talk at all as they healed, but then she was one of like, they didn't, she didn't strengthen them. She didn't do any vocal therapy or training like people in the real modern world would do with that kind of injury. So now she can talk, but it would sound, I won't tell you how it sounds because it's a spoiler, but it would sound very, very painful. I can't and wait. Like there's going to be a point like far <laughs> oh, yeah. in the future yeah. where Diagon is going to like, you know, baby says her first words and it's going to be so yeah. fucking exciting. Uh, <laughs> um, but now I'm playing with the idea, maybe <clears throat> is it the injury is that bad or is it psychosomatic? Is it a physical manifestation of PTSD from the attempt? Because there's a lot of people like the Outlander guy could talk relatively quickly he just didn't for a long time because it was it linked to the trauma of almost dying and being hung mm. and da 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 so maybe maybe she has told herself this as a safety mechanism maybe she can talk by now but she's so afraid to because her voice will sound different and then hearing that different sound will just remind her of what happened so i, I haven't decided yet i'm kind of gonna let the role play and the narrative decide and then someone asked, what if the DM eventually, like, wouldn't that be great motivation? It's like, hey, do this for me and I'll restore your ability to speak. I'm like, I don't know if she would want to. I don't know. I, it's a question I still haven't answered yet. Yeah. Of, I, yeah. I think that is something that uh, before I even dare introduce such a <laughs> thing is something that we'll talk about. Away. Like, yeah. And that's something that we'll talk about beforehand because I never want to force changes to a character onto someone without, like, without preemptively having talked about that like, that same yeah. with like when when ethan played aberan and aberan went through his like transition into like my my custom class um we talked about that beforehand like i yeah. wasn't gonna give him the option um without him letting him know like hey if this happens i might offer you this Are you cool with that so that sort of thing um ethan i wrote your question down we'll, we'll go through that uh after after yeah Oh, that's a cool question. Uh, Duke also asked a question on Reddit, but that is something that we'll discuss once Belle has also walked us through her character creation process, because it's cool. about, like, you guys, like, intermingling. Yep. Yeah. Um, so with that, uh, Belle, would you want to go through oh. your character creation process for us? I started creating Cass when Tasha's Cauldron came out, and uh, the Genie Warlock subla subclass came out. And I was like, I'm gonna, that's gonna be my campaign two character. So mm -hmm. I started with the class. Did and then also, like, I, yeah, he really was like interested in it. Yeah. And I was like, nope, that's mine. <laughs> no, um, we realized, I think, it was, I think it was last last dungeon select, or last, last dungeon discourse, we um, f realized that, holy fuck. Yeah, there's so many like, people who've taken things from Tasha. Four out of the six characters in the campaign are yeah. Tasha's Cauldron subclasses. Because yeah. <laughs> it's just such it's a cool crazy. book. Like, I mean, it's, it's such it's, a good I've, book. It is one of the best books in recent, like, one of the best expansions in recent, like, last couple of years, for sure. 100%. Oh, yeah. Um, and then, and that was about, I, I can't remember exactly where it is in that, like, time frame, but it was quite a while before campaign one finished. So I decided that I was going to take that class before anyone else could. But that I wasn't actually going to develop it until much later because I'd get excited about the character and wouldn't be as like invested in the ending of campaign one. Or at least that was my theory. Um, mm. And then as soon as campaign one was like drawing to its close, I started to figure out what her race was going to be. And what I really wanted her to be just as, as a person and decided that... Did you want to reveal like her proper like because she's like mixed, right? Um, and I decided I wanted her to, to have as many secrets as possible. <laughs> so I took as many elements as I possibly could and then just like hid things in it. Um, yeah. like when we were doing our, the part where our characters met up and it's like, I sent Belle my entire backstory because Daiging was just so happy to have a companion again. It's like, you know, everything and everything yeah, happened everything. in my life. <laughs> and then Belle just sent me six bullet points. Yeah. Here's what you know about Kess. Because Cass likes to hide everything, and Daigon doesn't even mind. You yeah. know, she's just like, someone wants to spend time with me, wow. Even <laughs> like, if they don't know who they are. <laughs> yeah. um, I decided as well that I wanted her to be like really far flung from the middle of nowhere that no one else will have heard of. Um, and from a completely different kind of people. 
so that everything she was seeing was new to her and was a brand new experience so she could get completely excited about it. That's what, um, I, yeah, that's what I've noticed like with your character so far is that every time something like weird or interesting happens she she gets so bubbly and like yeah. <gasps> it's fucking great i fucking love it i i also wanted her to be like really insightful so i wanted her to basically my entire concept concept was that i wanted her to be able to know when someone was lying to her face but i didn't want someone to know, like her to know if they were twisting a cultural tradition to manipulate her into doing something different so She's incredibly insightful, but so naive, and doesn't understand anything about people, essentially, and how to interact with anyone outside of her culture. Um, you know what that reminds me of? She's like the person, that story from like the behind the scenes Lord of the Rings set, where they just told, I can't remember, I think like the Viggo Mortensen told like Orlando Bloom early on and said, hey, you know, it's a cultural tradition here. They just headbutt each other. Like as a greeting, you should do it. And he fucking did it and like injured himself. And the stuntmen were just laughing their asses off like <laughs> an idiot because he just believed him. I feel like that, that's like a Kess situation. You could be like, yeah, oh, just, you know what they do here, right? Do and that. just tell yeah. her that there's a tradition. She's like, okay, I'll do it. Don't give me ideas. <laughs> Don't fucking give me ideas. <laughs> <laughs> She's like... I, w I decided I was going to go full genie vibes and make her an Aganasi. Um, and part of that was mostly because in my in my head, like the kind of magic that she deals with and the kind of person that she is would most likely be attributed to the kind of air. Like she's very perceptive. She's very insightful. She's really wise. She's just not very smart. Um, and... There are so many things I want to talk about, but I'm not going to talk about because <laughs> it's all spoilers. And there's just like a hundred different things that you have no idea about yet that I can't wait for to eventually be revealed. Um, and most of my backstory, like we were talking about earlier, um, that every D&D character has some kind of trauma because there's no way a sane person would do that. Mm -hmm. um, Kess is, she's not well adjusted. She should be well adjusted for like what, <laughs> where she came from and her and her childhood, which was very much like an only child raised by an entire community who just adored her and would let her get away with anything. Um, and she basically has, she has no trauma. She, she had a very happy childhood. She grew up loved by so many different people and then decided to leave one day to like do something new. Um, which is really fun because now I get to traumatize him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like I get to create the trauma. Yeah, <laughs> which was something I thought about, and then Ginny D made that video, and I was like, ah, fuck, <laughs> my credit <laughs> is gone. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it! Uh, but yeah, um, I mean, it's gonna be. It's what I look like. You know, what I look forward to with with Daigon, for instance, is um, just the party learning about why. You know what happened, and and the fact that how she got the the the, the fucking like the, the vocal cord um, like injury and not being able to speak and and that and all that, but also you know getting to a point where Daigon is going to speak if mm -hmm. that ever happens. But if it does, it's going to be such like an impactful like, yeah. especially like like the long. It's also one of the things where the longer you wait, the more impactful it will be as well because like. 10 sessions in first words oh hey she does talk fine 50 sessions in is like oh shit you know, you know yeah. what i mean like that's it like that is one of those things where the longer you let it fester and, and wait yeah. with it yeah. the more it's gonna be a similar be. moment to like the first time trim ever finally lost her shit and like spoke yeah. assertively <laughs> at anyone everyone was just like what is happening oh no <laughs> it's just gonna this be like very scary <laughs> but i also i also just want to naturally wait as long as possible because even though i have scratch vocal cords naturally me the, the voice I have in my head, if and when she does talk, I cannot sustainably do for an entire session. So I also have to just pick and choose when it's going to happen to protect my own vocal cords as a player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah but it makes sense. Yeah. Like, even when Daigon does start talking, that she'll still default to the sign language and only speak when she really, like, has to or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Say Kess is not around and she yeah. has to convey a message to someone in the party or whatever like it, there are situations where that could happen yeah. um so like she can still like be the mute character that she is for like 90 percent of the session but then every once in a while short yeah. bits of speaking if she really has to when the time has come that that she starts doing that or, mm -hmm. or whatever um 
the thing I look forward to with 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 uh, Kesslin is traumatizing her. Well, that I do love me a little <laughs> bit. It's going to be really fun. I am a bit of a. I I have a, I have, I'm a sucker for trauma when it comes to D and D. I fucking love just taking your backstory and just fucking making you regret ever writing it. Really. <laughs> Oh, wait. Last time, last time I used Belle's backstory against her, I fucking murdered half of her like friend group. You so, did. Uh, yeah. you, you know, like murdered uh, half, of, <laughs> almost her entire found family. So you know, like everyone I, I who meant anything known, to her. I am known to do that, and you guys didn't I, learn because you gave me a full ass yeah. backstory with a, with a bunch of characters again. So I guess I guess you didn't learn, but um. Well, I mean, I didn't <laughs> give you many characters in mind this time because yeah, part of why she's so attached to Kess now is she never had. Yeah. friends she was never treated kindly like it's still new to her the way i think though like there's other things in my backstory that if you really want to you can use like like the questions she's looking for answers there are certain answers to those questions that would be like that could break so her what you're saying is like for, that, for me but... to traumatize diagon i have to kill kesslin got it <laughs> or that no do that too we'll you do. would not no <laughs> day there's nothing to manipulate in my backstory that's a fucking lie soko uh, like, <laughs> most of most of the backstory I gave Dutch wasn't even backstory that related to Kess individually. It was all cultural information about her people and where she yeah. came from. And, like, Same. how they interact and their history and their economics and their, like, geography mm -hmm. and their yeah. culture and yeah, how it differs me, from the rest of You gave me, like, a bunch of, like, yeah, this is, like, yeah. this is the race and this is the where they came from and this is what they do. Yeah. This is their culture. Which they, is cool these are their that gods. saves me a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even so... name my parents in my backstory because that's how little attachment she has to them or cares. Like, mm -hmm. the, there are two named individuals in my whole backstory, and one of them comes from the joint part with Kess anyway, not even yeah. like me. Yeah, and and one, then the, the one I one named is dead. Is right? dead yeah, right. so... yeah. <laughs> <I'm the same. laughs> like, well... Can't kill a dead character, but I can resurrect them. You can resurrect again. a dead character. Um, <laughs> this is true. All, anyway. <laughs> all the characters in my backstory are alive, unless they're like thousands of years old, in which case sure they're obviously that? dead. Are you sure about that? <laughs> As far as I know, they're alive! <laughs> when was the last time Kess saw them? Hey! <laughs> Who knows? Like, there's sure? a whole bunch of uh, there's like sure? a long time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, same question that Ethan asked. Uh, Laura is now going to get asked to Bell. How did your character creation differ from campaign one for this one? Uh, what, I basically what, what, did. What was similar? What was different? I basically did everything in reverse. I chose race first um, for Actanus. Oh yeah. And um, completely built her like personality and who she was as a person before i picked everything else up and chose her class and her background and everything mm -hmm. um because i kind of went completely the opposite way and decided that that was the class i wanted to build and created the weirdest character i possibly could around that structure um in a way that like i i want to see him as it seems really normal i'm like totally Face value is just a Ganassi warlock, genie warlock, and mm -hmm. that's a pretty natural combination. Um, yeah. But still, waters run deep, <laughs> and that's not all she is. It's not all she is. <laughs> and basically, that's what I wanted to. I, for Ectanus, it was completely the opposite way of like what you get at face value is 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 who she what is. You, what you and, see is what you get. Yeah, exactly. And like, don't judge a book like, by its cover, except with Ectanus, because the cover is literally the, the, <laughs> yeah. the entire substance like, of the book. If she, she'll bury everything down deep so that not even she feels it, and then eventually it will come up, but it will be right to the surface instantly. Whereas with Kess, everything is hidden under subterfuge and illusion magic. And very cool. It was really fun. Very cool. Um, question from Old Shatter Geek. You went from an in-your-face barbarian to a ranged spellcaster. What made you move to the other end of the spectrum, and are you liking the difference? Um. So, what, what made me what made me decide that I wanted to do that? Um, I guess I, I really just... wanted to kind of like go for the complete opposite head of the, like face of the coin. Um, I did. I, I when I made Ectanus, it was the first D and D character I ever made, and session one of campaign one was pretty much the first proper session of DD i ever played um look how far you've come and look at now, look at me now okay. and i <laughs> had no grasp of the rules and <laughs> how it worked at all i read the player's handbook and i was like cool i can do this and we uh, threw I in could the deep end by just immediately fucking streaming our campaign and here we are almost mm -hmm. three years later 
I I always Actually, throw myself on the deep end, don't I? It's, September, yeah, right? it's like yeah, next month. it's three years next, next month. month. Three years done in select. Oh boy. Um, for campaign two, I decided I wanted to do something completely different, so I decided to do something ranged and magical. Um, and I really like. I think warlocks are my favorite of all the casters. Uh, I love them. I find their entire origin story of like how they get magic to be absolutely fascinating. Um, even though like the way Kez got magic is not that she sought out someone like like a, a genie and, and begged them for magic, it was kind of an accident. Um, <laughs> but more spoilers. <laughs> um, and I mean, you can go as deep as you want, right? Like yeah. you are in control here of what you reveal to, to, to oh the, yeah yeah to the viewers, that's where so. I'm telling myself that's a spoiler. <laughs> Um, and decided that I wanted to do, basically, I basically just wanted to do the complete opposite of what I had from Ectanus and go complete, it, I went from red to blue. <laughs> yeah. Literally, I went from red to blue. Um, and I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying doing something ranged. And every time I see my health, I panic just a little bit. <laughs> Um, to like Thomas, yep. I'm pretty sure I had the most health in the party. She had, oh, yeah. Yeah, she had, the, most, she had sure. the most health out of everyone in the party at the yeah. end of the campaign. Um, even the other barbarian, <laughs> much to Koiba's frustration. <laughs> like, I, was, I wanted to... I, I, was, I was looking at my health the other day like, oh, I wish I had the tough feet again. That's such a good feat, but I don't want to do that again, so I'm going to have to go and deal with this. So, I guess, I guess I'll take... I'll just guess I'll just take the the mage armor, and hopefully that'll be enough. Yeah, basically, I just decided I wanted to do completely I mean, the opposite. The, the, thing, the thing with like uh, playing a squishy character as well is is um, especially if you're used to being like this big ass fucking tank. It, it, it's like like it's again like just the complete opposite side of the spectrum. Yeah. But it also makes you appreciate, and it makes combat a lot scarier. Yeah, That's it does. Sure. It is. It's and much it, more nerve wracking. It, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. Which, I in a way, makes it a lot more like you know you 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 appreciate your character more if every fight they take is yeah. could be their last because. Yeah. I mean, I've already one gone good, unconscious one, once. One natural it's twenty, and you're fuck. You're fucked. You know what I, I mean? went unconscious on on session zero. You oh, you did. did. Yeah, I did it through. <laughs> yeah. Two unconsciousnesses so far, and they've both been you guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who'd have thought it? Very no, one else did it their, no one else did it in their session zeros. God fucking no. damn it. God uh, Soko got real Me. close, though. Soko got real yeah. close. I think it was at, like, anywhere between 1 and 4 HP at some point uh, during the fight. But um, that's when, you know, big man barbarian came in and, and yeah. Yeah. Started, yeah, yeah. started tanking. So, you know. Um, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Now we have a question from our very own uh, Bard of Fard, uh, Sir Duke. <laughs> Uh, for both of you, and this is something we haven't talked about yet, so this is a good no. way to address this. Um, at what point did, your, did the creation of your characters' uh, stories become intertwined? Um, since Daigon and Kess are better acquainted than the other duos, how long have they known one another by comparison? Yeah. Um, pretty, I think... Pretty yeah, quick. It was, it, was, it was really quick. I was still basically decided that I was going to play a genie warlock, and that was as much as I knew. And then... Laura was talking about wanting to have her character be mute, and I immediately jumped on that idea because that was really fun. Yeah. Well, and our original it. idea, which is now no longer the case, was yeah. it would be a symbiotic like relationship because you yeah. would help communicate for me. I look after your lamp at night when you're yeah. in it because that's a genie warlock thing. And now, if you've watched the two sessions, you know that doesn't happen. Uh, mm -hmm. We've never seen that happen. And like Daigon does not know about no. this whole. No, no one knows that she disappears into this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So instead, it was just. Um, instead, it became how we help each other, other than just having someone to travel with and look after each other's back. It was you. You help me with communication. I help her with the whole naive thing. Because how we yeah. met was I stopped someone from taking advantage of her. Because yeah. I overheard their conversation and was like, no, 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 don't do that. that that's, that's all dangerous. That's stupid. <laughs> and don't you're do a, that. You're a dumbass. <laughs> yeah, and I literally, because, uh, and, and also because, and then I like went to talk to the dude who was, and I was like, dude, you're trying to take advantage of this girl. Like, fuck off. And then she responded back in sign language. And I was yeah. just like, mind blown. I was mind like, blown. someone I could talk to. And we just got to talking and I, again, Daigon had been on her own 
for a long time at that point. Uh, with the only other person she ever been close to had died, and she was holding some guilt over that. So, not only did it was just like she was desperate for companionship in any way, uh, and it was someone she could talk to, but then it was also that kind of lingering guilt. So she kind of really threw herself into, I want this like protector role because I couldn't protect this other person. I'll I'll protect you instead, uh, kind of thing, and just have someone to talk to because she at first was like. I don't need anyone. I can be on my own. Fuck people. Everyone sucks. And then very quickly it was like, as much as Everyone I wish sucks. I could be that person, it's a human need. Eventually, yeah. even the most introverted person, as like the pandemic has taught us the beginning, some people were like, fuck yeah, let's go not see people for weeks. Netflix like, I'm all in. day, video games. Netflix all day. But then it drags on. You hit a year, you hit two years. Like, wait, I say human need. She's not a human need. A humanoid, a humanoid need is, yeah. even if it's only one person, everyone needs someone to talk to. Everyone needs someone to at least just feel seen at times. So... Yeah, they, so from a character creation standpoint, Belle and I really early on, like before we had any ideas fully fleshed out, we were like, our characters are going to be linked. Um, and then in our stories we've written, it's been about a little about, over a year, I think. I can pull it up right now. I think it's been. I don't know. I, has it been over that? I don't know how long it would have taken for them to bounce around the continent. Um, It's on my world you... angle page. Hold on. Is it? Yo, big up world By angle, the way, guys, guys, check out world, world, angle. world angle. Dude, I <laughs> through, I'll, like, I'll put in sure, all my I'll inventory sure the and stuff. recaps of the first two sessions will be up there uh, by, by Sunday. Uh, but other than that, there's already a million fucking pages about, about like several guilds, NPCs, zones of the city. Yeah. The, uh, there. So if y'all wanna, you know, it's read, 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 that. read Davian's journal. Soon you'll be able to look at uh, Brooks's nudie drawings. N nudie drawings. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, things along, traveling. Yeah. The, oh, we've traveled together for a year and a half by the time the campaign starts. Is there in my. Go is in the world anvil on my backstory yeah so. there you go there you go a year and a half it's so been yeah, like, like a really long time for them definitely know each other the, the most because yeah uh Jax and brooks only have a couple of weeks that they've like like a week and a half or so or, or at this point in time where we are in the campaign like a week and a half if mm -hmm. that maybe even less um and same with uh same with um Davian and Elazarin as well. They've only they're all, they're also like they're, you guys definitely are a lot tighter and, and know each other a lot better because of the whole like travel and you travel to the city together and, and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, we've traveled they, a lot of places. Yeah, <laughs> they met in Calzia and basically just bounced around all the different yeah. areas of the like continent. We, we did the Expanse. We did Sigalia. We've done like we've done a lot. <laughs> we've done a lot. Mm. Of Expanse places. Sigalia. Then we did Thermogar. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I tracked through the a little bit. <laughs> Nelly died a couple times. <laughs> yeah, you didn't. Next thing uh, I want to talk about is your session zero. Uh, yeah. We're not going to go into spoiler territory because there's definitely oh, some like, okay, heavy okay. fucking... There are like, even more secrets. <laughs> a lot of secrets. Yours was is definitely the one with the most secrets, so I'm going to try Oh, shit! Oh, baby! Be, 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 be very careful with what I do say about it. Uh, but we we kind of alluded a little bit in our alluded. secret, our, yeah, our secret yeah. conversation that we had yeah, out exactly. in the open. Because <laughs> Duke was like, I have no idea what this conversation is about at all. <laughs> you, for your session zero, you um, got, you both have history with a certain guild or certain a certain group of people. And that history gave, gave you some renown in that, in those circles, which is why an individual from a similar, if not more like exclusive version of said order, uh, reach out to you with a test. A test to go to a certain place and receive a certain item, uh, which you did. And by doing so, you were offered uh, membership of said order, which you accepted, which opens opened an, a lot of opportunities and doors for your two characters, not only in this city, but throughout the entire province that you're in, essentially. Um, which um, is interesting because it is something that is like, you know, you're not really supposed to tell people about, but at some point... It will have to be uh, it'll, mentioned. It'll, it'll happen. You're oh, going to have to spill the beans with the party and all that stuff. But um, it is very cool to see 
the, obviously every session zero, like I said before, is that every session zero kind of took place in different parts of the city. Whereas yours was mainly like the guild slash temple district. Um, and Ethan and Soko's was mainly the like northern residential area slash a little bit of trade district. Um, and Davian and the Lazarum was like not was like outside of the city on, on like the on the way to the city. And then what they saw in the city was uh a little bit of the military district and a little bit of the temple district um, because Elazarin is obviously a cleric and a religious boy. Yeah. So he went, to, he went to go do stuff there as well. Um, helped set up, like, helped build the carts that you saw uh, go by in the parade uh, during the festival. Like Elazarin helped build uh, and Davian, I think, also kind of helped a little bit. Cool. Um, but yeah, so like you guys... Dude, I really, I man, I wish I could say more about your session zero. Yeah. But I just fucking can't because there's so many <laughs> fucking secrets. Um, regard that are so much cooler if they get revealed on stream. Get revealed the session. on stream, yeah, during the session. So unfortunately, as far as session zero goes, I mean, what, what are your thoughts on it? You know, like anything I, that you guys want to say about it, maybe? Because I can't I really think say one much. of like the one of the most fun parts I think about their relationship is that um, Daigon is very much kind of like morally upright in a way that Kes is absolutely not and she will do pretty much anything to get yeah. some money and will persuade well, her to kind of follow in her stead and be like hey let's yeah. go do this kind of sketchy thing and <laughs> well the funny thing is it's not like morals like kind of the wrong word yeah, it it's is like, like my alignment is lawful neutral i'm not a yeah. good character because it's her kind of morality is like the world's fucked me so yeah. if i fuck it back a little bit you know what like it's it's karma like i've i've been mistreated my whole life i'm like she's never gonna go out of her way to like upset yeah. harm or like do bad but she's also not concerned if like the collateral damage of her actions hurt someone else per se the what she is is lawful she is terrified yes. of breaking rules because she's yeah, like basically. i was already hung i was i was sentenced to death when i didn't break the rules what happens if i'm caught actually committing a crime mm -hmm. like i'm gonna be tortured and then sentenced like what what's yeah. gonna happen and i was of two minds of that i was of two minds between between being chaotic or she's like i followed the rules and i still got accused of breaking them fuck it or doing this one being like I need to be so careful and above reproach because I'm I'm at a disadvantage. I will I'm already like gonna be accused if I'm even in the proximity of something happening. And mm -hmm. I thought that one was a bit more interesting to play because like oh, the yeah. chaotic and like fuck the rules and do what I want is just such an easier and common thing in D and D. Yeah. Um, and also lawful characters are almost always lawful good that I've that I've come across in my experience. Lawful as good a is definitely like like the go to for the go to like, like as Paladin, Claridin kind of trope yeah, exactly. and things like but that. Yeah. yeah. So it's not so much that the thing morality about alignment, is the wrong sorry, word. Sorry it's about like, Yeah, it's like lawful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like sorry, like uh, the thing about alignment is though, like it's a good stepping stone to kind of base mm. your character's like motivations on and stuff, but alignment is something that especially like in our campaign at least, something that like say you do certain things that i deem oh, it doesn't really fit the alignment you have do things like that more enough and i'll just tell you your alignment has shifted yeah yeah you are, no, you are no longer changes. you are like no 100%. longer lawful neutral because you know say 30 seconds down the line i've seen you break rules and kind of step away from that lawfulness enough that i'll be like okay well you are no longer lawful neutral this is more yeah. like a true neutral or maybe even a chaotic neutral yeah but and um, it was it was a really hard thing for me because immediately <laughs> the way Dutch set up our session zero, I was like, if I was on paper, I should just say no sorry and just ruin his entire session zero and not do this <laughs> thing mean, that, that he planned. Because I, I said it, I, I said it, I said it during the session zero as well. I was like, if you don't want to, that's fine. There's other stuff. I to know, do. but the, and basically <laughs> it was like there are two things that swayed her into doing it, even though it's like eh, rules questionable. One was like we got the assurance that you can do this without physically harming anyone and i was like okay and then like we were given a narrative that made it sound like it's like the greater good right it's like you're yeah, maybe breaking with, a rule on paper with, but with greater good law, greater lawful that people sometimes forget is like you're not lawful yeah. good you're right you're lawful neutral yeah, i'm lawful yeah. neutral so that yeah. means it doesn't necessarily lawful means that you are you are about the rules but it doesn't mean that doesn't mean that it has to be the rules of the city guard. It could very well be the rule sets that you get given by this group that approached you and their tenets yep. and their rules that you are lawful to. Like yeah. lawful does not does by no means by no by no way shape form mean 
oh, you follow the laws of whatever continent, city, empire, kingdom, whatever the fuck you're in. Lawful just means, like, you have a certain... Um, you feel a certain obligation to follow the rules of the group or organization or whatever the fuck it is. Exactly. That you pledged your loyalties to in a way i guess yeah so whether it is the city guard or the fucking uh, the, the, uh, assassins guild that doesn't fucking matter yeah right yeah. So, like i yeah. think i think another like part of that is that the, the the duality between them is that like you have you have daigon who is very lawful um regardless of what rules those technically are mm -hmm. and uh kes who as part of her outlander isn't from around here has no concept doesn't of know the rules doesn't, <laughs> doesn't understand the whole law thing <laughs> and is basically like well that's a stupid rule why would i why would i follow that rule just because someone told me to that doesn't make any sense what are they gonna do like what are, they gonna, what are they gonna do execute you <laughs> listen she doesn't understand these things <laughs> she is very very naive <laughs> it's like hey, it's fine if it all works out well no one's gonna do anything are they uh, yeah, they will. <laughs> uh, sure. Basically, a question, reverse it, question for Dutch. If I had been like, sorry, this opportunity you've given us, I'm not doing it. And if I had convinced Kessler not to do it, like, what? Oh, also, no, no details, but like, did you have a pivot, like, yeah. prepared? And would you, or, and would you have enjoyed it as much? Or would you been like, God fucking damn it. Fine. I definitely did think that what B? you guys did is the cooler. It was the cooler of the two options oh, that I had yeah. written out Agreed. for me. But yeah, there was, there was definitely, uh, okay. if that wouldn't have happened, uh, you would have uh, gotten a visit um, by someone else mm -hmm. uh, that saw you talk to these people and ask you oh. to investigate them instead. Ooh, that's that interesting. would have been that would have been <laughs> the Ooh. other option. Um, yeah, as out of character, I like the way this one ended, just because of and without saying, but because of the, the how it ended, the final yes. ending note and the plot hook. You kind of left us. Laura loves. Is oh yeah, and I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm loving. I'm loving my god count as well for this character. <laughs> That is just like Ectanus was like, ah, I hate the gods. The gods suck ass yep. and they're the worst. And then Cass is like, I have three. <laughs> yeah. Also, there's one particular thing that happened. That... Two. No, no, <laughs> one thing that happened that I love that Laura and Bell know that none of the other players know yet, and I cannot wait for it to come out because like, it, like, get... it, it doesn't even mean that much to Daigon and Cass, but it means a lot to Laura and Bell, and I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I mean, it means something to Cass. She Actually, knows yeah, more about yeah, it yeah, than you. Yeah, it means by, more than you. Yeah, than yeah. Oh, you're talking about yeah, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, 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 right. I got you. I got you. Secret. Basically, <laughs> this whole this whole thing is to say that there are lots of secrets with these two. <laughs> yeah. And you need to find them out by watching the show every week, the every show. Sunday. <laughs> Pot hooks, baby. Pot hooks. Um. So I think I mean that's your session zero. That's your character creation. Yeah. I think lastly, I wanted to I want to do a quick little recap and ask you some some questions or thoughts about. The last session that we did, that we dubbed uh, there... Friendly Competition. Friendly Hello? Competition. There was a question from Duke in the chat that was just like, what oh. do our characters think of the rest of the party oh, so yeah, far? Yeah. Like, what's first oh, that impressions? Was Ethan. Right, right, yeah, I forgot about that. I wrote that down, then I forgot about it. Someone yeah, did yeah. it, yeah. Uh, yeah, how do you how do you both, in, like, how do your characters feel about the other members of the party so far? Because we got to see Davian's opinion via yeah. Yeah. journal yeah, entry. Yeah, we but, did. Uh, um, yeah, so how do, well, yeah, we'll do that. How do, right how now, do the, the one that... Feel? There's one party member that Daigon already feels like if they asked for our aid, I will do it because I owe them a life debt, and that's Jax, because I was unconscious and Jax, like, brought me back. So, uh, that's probably the one. I wouldn't say it's, like, an emotional attachment, but, like, the biggest, like, bond or threat of something is, like, I want to repay that favor before we part ways, and I don't know how kind of thing. <clears throat> um... A Lazarin seems fine, seems chill. Again, I, I, I'm more inclined to like characters like a Lazarin because they also seem like you like to follow rules. You're not going to get me into trouble kind of thing. Because uh, I already run that Lazarin's risk enough with Kess. Um, Brooks. <laughs> yeah, you do. Bro Brooks confuses her. Um, partially because also another another aspect about Daigon is Daigon has never... It's almost like there's been so many other issues in her life and other problems to deal with. Daigon's never explored her romantic or sexual identity at all. So Daigon, I think, thinks she's an asexual, but 
Laura, I, I don't know if that's true. It's more like, no one's ever going to want me, therefore I'm just going to choose preemptively not to want other people in that way. So seeing Brooks with, like, that the way, sex workers hurt. and stuff. Yeah. So seeing, like, Brooks with the sex workers and stuff was just very, like, we And even just being around the sex workers to her was just such a, like, uncomfortable, not because she's any issue with what they do, but because it just reminds her, hey, that whole part of you that you've never actually figured out how it works. Yeah. That, it's right that. there. It's right there. <laughs> it's right there. Standing um, in that corner. <laughs> and also she could tell Brooks is like kind of like the like more dexterous. Like physically, Brooks is very similar to her. And so there's also a little bit of like competitive not jealousy yet, but also just like I wanna I wanna be better than you. I wanna show that I'm more badass. A little bit of friendly competition. Bit. Just like, yeah. like the name oh, of the episode. It came full circle. It came full circle. Look at that. Full circle. And then I think <laughs> Davian is still just kind of like no negatives, but nothing. He hasn't made any, like, good or bad impression on her yet. It's still trying to figure him out. Because the first impression was just, like, I think when he saw the room, he was like, there's a fucking giant cat in here! And she's so sick, and she's like, I'm not a cat! I'm, I'm, I'm a humanoid cat! I'm different! It's not, it's not a thing! And so that's never a fun start. But, um... I don't know, again, it's just, it's just like, I, she doesn't really know much about him. She wants to figure him out, and just, like, yeah. So uh, right now it's just like competition slash confusion with Brooks wants to repay the life debt to Jax feels pretty chill about a Lazarin because feels like they're the most similar to her in terms of values and, and like approach to rules and problem solving. And then Davian's still a big question mark, but n no negative thoughts either yet. Okay. What about Kess? Uh, going in order of who she met, uh, Davian, she has like somewhat of a grudge against him because he assumed <laughs> she was the assassin and she's extremely offended <laughs> he thinks she would assassinate someone with a crossbow um, um but she well, also it. just thinks he's kind of like he, he knows some things but he's also kind of stupid is her opinion um a Lazarin is kind of this she kind of thinks he's stupid as well and that he's a little bit slow. Um, <clears throat> That's rude. <laughs> but she thinks she thinks they're basically harmless towards her. Like she doesn't see them <laughs> as being a threat. Mm. Um, Jax, she's extremely interested about because His she devices. knows. Yeah, like he he has all these really cool devices, and he is something she has never seen before. Um, just going off the fact he was like, well, I'm not one of, I'm not one of her. She's like, so what are you? Ooh, big Explain up, big yourself. Big up for Dalkin, dude. For Dalkin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she's a, like absolutely fascinated. I've never even heard of that race before. Like as, it's like, very, as it's a player hasn't heard niche. of it. It's very it's niche. It's very niche. Like it is, it is like a canon, like Forgotten Realms, like, like thing, yeah. but it is very niche and they kind of live in their own realm and don't really do the whole cross planar travel thing. Like they, they're very like secluded and on their own and uh what Verdalkan Verdalkan are kind of a race that are always like they they don't believe in perfection perfection doesn't exist and they're always looking for ways to improve and that kind okay. of links into Soko's choice to go artificer because he's Verdalkan yeah. he always wants to make better things better, and bigger and better himself and by using these things that he makes and that's cool that sort of thing that's kind of like the mindset of of, of his of a Verdalkan in general and that's why that's why that combination of Verdalkan artificer works really well because you know they're constantly improving themselves really by making all these cool gadgets and devices and things um yeah so she's extremely fascinated by jackson i think when they kind of like get to know each other more they'll probably get on more than i think soko expects them to um <laughs> as, as for brooks uh she's extremely fascinated by brooks <laughs> just in general she finds him fascinating just like his entire like devil may care attitude which she hasn't really seen very much before um outside of herself and general like genuine absolute bullshit all the time <laughs> um particularly appeals to her as well as like i think she's also has this underlying this this guy could surprise me and i want to see how he's gonna surprise me because there's some there's, there's more to this then then that is me in the eye and i want to know what's going on but also he's, she's just kind of like teenage bad boy <laughs> phase we're in a 90s coming of age movie yeah i, mean, I, I guess it. i guess yep. yeah this is true. Yeah, all right basically she's not young and naive but she's like yeah. 
padded man. How how old is uh, Cass? She is like twenty. Yeah, so she is so she is very young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, so with that said and done, um, session two, you uh, were just off the back of delving into an underground sacrificial temple uh, uh, of, of the Yuan Ti, uh, a race of, of snake-like humanoids uh, that revert to their own set of deities that are native to the province of Keldar and mainly reside in the jungles. Um, some tribes or like clans, families, communities of Yuan Ti have accepted the influx of, of outsiders uh, and, and work with them. Some, however, absolutely hate the idea of having to share their land with people that weren't native to it and think it's disgusting um, and are lashing out a little bit, uh, you know, by trying to assassinate the voice of that community, uh, being the Imperial Emissary uh, Tranliel. Um, session one saw you go going in there, getting rid of the, the, the Yuan Ti uh, in that temple, um, going back to the temple district in the city, making sure that Tranliel uh, is all right and all that stuff. Um, then, the festival started. You guys played some games, from goblin toss to, to an archery competition to arm wrestling, a bunch of different different shit. Um, kind of pretty pretty like laid back. I wanted to basically like emphasize as soon as we started the campaign, like, okay, here's these are the stakes. This is gonna be your first story arc. You're gonna go investigate this, like who who is giving the like right now, up in this point. It's clear that someone from the inside of the city has been feeding in, in the information to the Yuan Ti, like when to strike, where to dig their tunnels to, and that sort of shit. Um, like, it is clear that there's betrayal happening, and it is going to be onto you, really, to figure out who and ma make it stop. Um, and uh, I wanted to, like, immediately, first session in, be like, okay, these are the stakes. This is the story. But also, wanted to start off with a festival to kind of immediately in the first few sessions have, like, seriousness, but also, oh, this is the playful, oh, we're gonna party, drink, have fun, socialize, kind of all have that happen in the first couple of sessions. Um, to kind of get, to kind of give everyone like an idea of like like everything, pretty much. Right? This is us when we socialize and, and do do the social role play and play games and are playful. And this is us when we deal with some serious shit and have to have to uh, you know uh, you know solve some crime or whatever it may be. Um, are you not entertained? <laughs> exactly. So the first half, a little over the half of of that session was just you know you guys going around enjoying the festival. Uh, getting robbed by an urchin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> only playing, one of us. Only one of you. Urchin. Playing some, playing some games. Uh, it. Having some drinks. Interacting a lot with with the, the the NPCs in the friendly giant, which I I love role playing those NPCs. Dude, it is so much fun. Yeah, so much fun to role play like you know, all those like all those like workers there, and it, it is really cool because obviously because Brooks has been staying there for for a while now, like even before session zero, his character has stayed there for a little bit, so he's like. He's part of the part of the furniture at this point. Like people know him, all the workers that know him. He typically like before session zero, before you guys came around, he like had breakfast with them, and like you know, like, it's very clear that all the workers there appreciate him, and and think he's a pretty cool dude. Um, and Jax has also kind of like since he met Brooks, he immediately moved his like he stopped his 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 rent of a room in the Weeping Mug and came to. This one to kind of hang with Brooks more, and they now also have like this 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 relationship with Jax, where you know they see him as this harmless but but protective uh, uh, older individual that they like to you know tease every once in a while. <laughs> but um, it is for me, it's really fun. I just love playing characters that I'm in real life very like uncomfortable around, which yeah. in this case is just <laughs> it's just like I dude th women with confidence that like approach me terrify me because i'm an introvert <laughs> i do i don't know you back up so but, I, but through dnd i get to like play those characters and and kind of you know i, I don't know i think it's fun <laughs> i think it's fun um i don't know what this says about me but you know here we are <laughs> I mean, I think, uh, <laughs> like, confident women just tend to intimidate everyone, though. It's part of yeah, the problem with the I mean, I, I, not even women. Confident people intimidate me, bro. Like, how, yeah. how are you? How does, how does that work? <laughs> but, um, 
I, I really enjoyed like you guys kind of like staying there and, and, and interacting with all those NPCs because I put a lot of thoughts in those NPCs. Like I, I shit you not, especially like the sex workers there. I have like, uh, these are their do's. These are their don'ts. This is why, this is what makes every worker there different. These are their like select Love it. niche like kinks. This is why, oh, this is why they go to this you know this is why they hire them because that is something that they're into that i like i do i put so much like work out characters i put so much work in like workers yeah i put so much work into those characters it's actually kind of ridiculous but it was fun dude i don't know i had fun i doing appreciate it. that i'm sure so many people will just be like oh they're a sex worker just make some yeah. trope like like slutty bombshell character no. bang, bang, boom, done so i appreciate making them because like flesh out people like for instance like pleasure are. the tiefling is this very playful uh as, as you kind of saw with with like with with Skoiba's character as well and kind of likes the more shy and finds joy in getting that shy person to kind of open up and end up uh paying her for her services um and then you have and then you have Rob who is literally like just your everyday uh, bloke that likes to drink and have fun but yeah he also he also is a sex worker and you know doesn't really care about you know gender as long as he gets to have fun in the bedroom and gets paid. He's happy. Um, and then you have, like, Varya, the Goliath, who is the, your stereotypical, oh, people that are into getting their heads squished like a fucking watermelon go to her because <laughs> she's fucking massive. Uh, <laughs> and they all kind of have, like, their... And then there is this one character, uh, Rianel, who is a high elf that you briefly interacted with, who is kind of, like, the mom of that entire company, who, like, is the oldest, has worked there the longest... And it's kind of like their the guide there uh, of of um, of, uh, of of those workers and very protective over them because she sees them as their family, and um, yeah, I, I don't know. I really enjoy making those NPCs and then like having them interact with you guys. I think it's awesome. Um, but um, after that, your festival got kind of interrupted because uh, there were some developments in the investigation. Um, that had you, uh, investigate the, uh, Imperial Trade Company, because there's a bit of a, a bit of an issue there, because the leader of that trade company is part of the council that rules the city and rules the province with, uh, Tranliel, and, um, hence why she was, at, she asked you, you, since you're already, like, in the know and a part of this investigation now, like, okay, I want to. I don't want to risk completely fucking the law enforcement in this city. So we're gonna send some outsiders, and you know, if things go down, we'll figure it out. But they seem competent enough. She basically kind of like put her like faith in you and hopes to God that you guys didn't fuck up. Um, that had you go down into the trade company and you found a hidden underground uh, temple, uh, similar to the other Yuanti temples, uh, with a pretty like makeshift altar that kind of looks similar to the altars you've seen before uh, with a hastily scrawled letter to from a son to someone to to his mother uh, regarding um that basically entailed that he feels his heritage is being mistreated and that is why he's doing what he's doing and when you th went down there you triggered a trap slid down the ramp which also woke up a creature that lived under the floor, a little, a little bit of a guard dog, scary serpent, uh, which you'll be fighting, uh, like a twelve-legged snake, lightning snake, essentially, with like horns. It's kind of like a, like it's kind of like a snake centipede dragon hybrid. It's really cool. They're called, they're called behirs. Oof. Normally, they're like super high CR, but this is like a. I just made like okay, this is a behir, but it's like it's like a young one. It's it's, it's a, a young, baby. It's a, it's young, a baby. Not, not, not baby, but like yeah, like. <laughs> young Bahir. So Hasn't like he's fully not a, matured yet. Exactly, like not a strong... It's a teenager. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, which you'll fight, that, that'll be the start of the next session, is, is that fight, and then obviously, you know, continuing that inv investigation of like, okay, fuck, we found this letter, how are we gonna figure out who wrote it? That sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but that that was the session. I'm excited, because uh, it is almost Sunday. We're over I like how the yeah. discourse is kind of like that halfway point th through yeah, the week, it where is. it's, it's like, okay, much. we're officially like halfway through the week it's only three more three more days until uh, until sunday um but with that oh wait did you osg guys... oh what I, where are those stuffed animals you oh. guys won 
I mean, I, the part of the reason I picked, I asked for the random animal like a meerkat is because aside, aside from, I think that's an animal Dagon would have seen where she grew up. Um, but also, it's they're little, they're small, they're tiny, they're so tiny. it's easy to fit and take it yeah, with me. Duh, but but like Kessa's is probably in her in her lamp. I'm in pretty, her sure, lamp. pretty sure you said yeah. that. Yeah, they be in her, in her, in her little genie lamp. She's decorated. Wait, which again was hinted at because I asked where it was, or, and she just said, "You, you do notice it is not with her. It's not with her." And yeah. Daigon just assumed, "Oh, she left it in whatever room we stayed at," because Daigon has not learned the secret of the lamp yet. Mm -hmm. Nope, no one has learned um, the secret of the lamp yet. It's but great. <laughs> with that said, I like to keep these uh, these short and sweet. things like short and sweet, like an hour ish, a little over an hour is where we're at right now. So unless but there's we more... could talk about D and D for ages. Yeah, we could, but uh... <laughs> I know. Uh, but if there's any questions about anything, ask them now, whether it's you two or anyone in chat. Or if not, next week we'll have uh, Duke and Koiba on if things go right. To talk about their character creation, their session zero. If you have any questions about that, uh, I am making the Reddit thread. Uh, as soon as I go offline here. So if you, if you have any questions for, for Duke or Koiba regarding their characters and all that stuff, yeah, uh, submit them there or tweet them at the Dungeons like Twitter. Both work. I has a um, question. I'll do hmm? it. I'll put, I'll put it in the subreddit afterward. Okay. Have has Diagon ever had catnip or catnip like equivalents? <laughs> I mean, that, what, just like normal drugs that other humans and humanoid races would take is probably the same. Like, I is can't that think how, of anything. Is, that how Diagon... is there a tabaxi specific drug that's like, there, I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, maybe. Is that how time, Diagon time realized? Dutch like, turn. every time Diagon does like the fucking 160 feet movement thing, is just he takes a little low body catnip and has his little, hit, and little hit of catnip. <laughs> just goes. We can spell yeah. component. <laughs> that's how we flavor that from now on. It's like. <sighs> I reach in my inside pockets. <laughs> well, if you <laughs> want it, I'm down. No, I that's think that's It's your character. You do whatever the fuck you want to do. <laughs> oh, but uh, thanks for watching the Discourse. This will be on YouTube on uh, Saturday. If you're watching this on YouTube, hell yeah. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, like and subscribe and all that shit. And follow Hello, us on Twitch. Uh, with that, we'll see you Sunday for Dungeon Select Campaign 2 Session 3. Thanks oh, for watching, wait. everybody. Take care. Have a good night. Thanks for being here. Laura, Bell, this was fun. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys uh, Sunday. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.